Okay, we have Nix Ops for Proxmox by Ryan Laffa. And in this talk, we are going to explore how to build and manage dozens of Nixos virtual machines in a Proxmox cluster using NixOps in declarative fashion. And a little bit about Ryan, if you're not familiar, he has been a FOSS developer for more than five years, and he is a student in mathematics and computer science. And he enjoys playing around with like infrastructure, and he runs his own micro data center using NixOS. Okay. Hello everyone. I will introduce you to NixOps for Proxmox, which is a plugin for NixOps using Proxmox. So first we will see what is Proxmox, what is NixOps and what are backends in NixOps. The actual Proxmox backend, the challenge I encountered writing this, ba this backend, and what can be built on the top of this and what can we learn from this kind of experimentation. Finally, there will be a demonstration showing how to deploy SR.HT on your own infrastructure using a Proxmox and NixOps. So Proxmox is a distribution uh, made to deploy virtual machine in containers. Uh, it's using KVM and QEMU, and it comes with a nice web UI and API command line. Uh, it handles for you a lot of details that you don't want to deal with, such as, such as storage backend, um, multi clusters, and it's being actually used in production on real world deployments. As for NixOps, it's a Python application uh, that enables you to uh, transform Nix expression uh, into uh, reality. So that means that, for example, um, if you read down what is supposed to look like your infrastructure and you have the right backend, so a plugin that implements uh, the, the right API call to transform Nix expression into, into reality, then NixOps will ensure that uh, it, the reality will match that what your Nix expression describes. That's the theory. Um, in fact, it works pretty much well, not really good at large scale, but it's super interesting. Uh, one of the things I like about it is super modular, meaning that you can read down backends for whatever you want, as long as you have an API or something like that. For example, there are Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, Azure, Edsnell, LibVRD, VirtualBox, and it supports trivial NixOS machine with a SSH server. So a backend is basically a plugin in, uh, in NixOps that implements a certain part of the Nix NixOps interface and bring a definition, so think a Nix expression, think a, a, an expression of a resource like a disk, into reality. So uh, if you had a disk in your definition, the backend will be responsible to bring this disk into your infrastructure by creating it, then attaching it to whatever resources you have that mention this disk, and doing a lot of things on it depending on your actual implementation. For example, here I'm taking a simple um, Amazon Web Services NixOps expression, which deploy a machine called Machine, um, and it's deployed in a certain region and a certain for a certain instance type. So it imports also information about my Amazon Web Services account. Uh, that's the ec2-info.nix. And what is interesting is that if you build on the top on this Nix expression and then someday you say, oh, I need a beefier machine, you could just change the instance type, right? And everything would work more or less fine. So that's an interesting thing. Well, over software implements it also uh, in the Nix ecosystem. Um, <coughs> but actually, I'm going just to use NixOps uh, and Proxmox. So, I start from the fact that there are no actual real backend for private infrastructure. Uh, LibVRD is not enough on its own because it doesn't implement uh, as much things as Proxmox does. Uh, so after some time of installing NixOS manually using the live, um, I decided to read down a NixOS plugin, which made sense, and I wanted to validate if it was the right idea and it was 
if NixOps was flexible enough for my use case. And actually, if it, it feels a bit like Amazon Web Services uh, with a lot less feature, of course. But it has this nice property of being a bit declarative and, and being able to map over machines and deploy, deploy them automatically, etc. So I think I, I in my opinion, the, 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 the experiment is a success because I, I really want to extend this plugin and go further. And that's actually possible thanks to modularity of NixOps. I will just outline for, for, the, for the, the talk how the, the plugin works. So it's not super perfect, huh? it's of course. But basically, it just creates what it needs to create first, so disk then virtual machines, then it will attach a CD-ROM at the same time. Uh, it will wait for QEMU agent to be up. So QEMU agent is an out-of-bound communication mechanism that you can use even if you don't have networking yet at this step. So that's super useful because I'm not sure that I can have DHCP giving me IP or I can even route some packets to the virtual machine. So. Using this agent, I can provision SSH key, prepare the machine for receiving NixOS on the disk, doing the partitioning script, um, and uh, generating an initial configuration.nix before the actual installation. Then I will check if after the install, everything is fine. And if everything is fine, I will mark it as installed and give the job back to NixOps to do its magic. So that means that NixOps will now assume that the target is a NixOS machine and that it can be provisioned like a NixOS machine. So sending some closure and switching of configuration. Um, and also secret sometimes, uh, there are more details, it's not that important. Um, one of the challenge I encountered was that uh, NixOps has no real support for IPv6. Um, so, at the same time, as it was super modular, I could just bake the IPv6 support in my own plugin. And this is what I've done. So it looks like this. Uh, I just get some uh, interfaces with our IP addresses from the QEMU agent. Then I just do iteration over it, filter for the private IP, the public one, the v6, the v4. I exclude the link local for IPv6 because it's I don't want to use them, but it could it could be used. And then I take the first reachable, or I don't. Uh, that's interesting because it brings me to the next challenge I encountered, which is how to select the right endpoint. If you have that many addresses, how do you know uh, beyond the reachability criterion? How do you know which one you, s you choose? So. Um, I, I listed two scenarios that I actually encountered in real life and um, personally I decided to fix this by saying I always have IPv6 on my machine but that's not an acceptable fix. Um, but at the same time it was interesting. I think that research has have some algorithm on that. Uh, that uh, you, you want, in fact, you want to optimize your endpoint based on multiple factors. For example, you want that uh, an endpoint that is fast, an endpoint that is reliable, and an endpoint that is, of course, reachable. <laughs> so that's interesting. I didn't implement the whole solution, and I'm still looking for, for uh, an implementation on that. Um, and my nemesis currently is partitioning. So partitioning uh, is not declarative in general. In the installer, you have to do uh, your partitioning yourself. Um, there are actually some software that can help to, to, to this. Hetzner is using Nixpart, for example, the Hetzner backend. But it's not that flexible for my use case, and I would like to have full, uh, I, w I would like to use every file system I want. So ZFS is out of the question using Nixpart, unfortunately. Uh, so I feel back on the classical bash. Uh, but it's, of course, super error prone. It's not that bad, but uh, I spend too much time uh, looking, reading the manual page and doing stupid mistakes. So I would like to get out of this model to do something better, and I will talk about it later. So the current state of the plugin is, it's of course buggy. It's not absolutely what Vipool war because I use it, it works, but uh, it has to be a lot improved. 
so that it could be used in production, for example. Um, there are at least some bugs that I, I'm sure exist. Um, some of them are trivial to fix, the state machine one, for example. Um, but uh, the most annoying one to me is I cannot use default NixOS in my edges. And I'm forced to use a custom one, which is provided in the repository, because I need to enable QEMU agent. Um, but if I find a solution for that, I could get rid of the default of the custom NixOS image. Other than that, it's really alpha quality, so you don't have backup, tag support, you don't have route and robin distribution on your Proxmox cluster, so you want to have like maybe equal repartition of all of your virtual machine over all your nodes. You could do it yourself in the backend, to be fair, so it's not a real problem. Um, what I will look forward uh, to would be to extend this kind of work uh, to other kind of software that you can see in private infrastructure. Uh, personally, I use VIOS, and it would be interesting to manipulate uh, your routing mechan your root 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 routing in uh, in XOS, uh, and acting on the top of it using API etc. So that's an experiment I would like to conduct and uh, bring the routing table to the next expression would be really interesting so that you could build some kind of DSL on the top of your uh, expression and then you can express a lot of things in a concise way and changing one thing doesn't have to, uh, to force you to find which things I need to change, etc. Uh, because you can just propagate the changes automatically to everything that it needs. So that would be really interesting. Also, uh, of course, I, I showed that I don't have declarative partitioning, but I want declarative partitioning. So of course, uh, it's not a solved problem currently, as far as I know. Uh, there are some efforts in Nix part. Uh, there, are, there is an interesting draft of the partition mapper in the wiki of Nix part, which is how to do, uh, how to transform if you have a file system uh, into another and how to emit the commands to migrate the things. So that's super interesting because it means like you can do live migration, uh, live changes to your file system. Uh, but of course, it has to be in a secure way for your data. So I'm not sure on this point, but um, it's based on a library using by Red Hat people. Uh, they're using it in their Fedora installer. And it looks like pretty much solid. So I think it's interesting to, to, to pursue uh, such a thing. And also, uh, I require it because uh, I would like to have automatic Lux decryption and automatic Lux encryption, uh, which is the next point. Um, if you don't have declarative partitioning, it's super hard to automate uh, Lux encryption, except by doing some scripts and stuff like that. But it's error prone, and it's bash, and um, passphrase management is not super obvious, uh, extra, extra. So if we would have like secret management a la Ansible, uh, a la Vault using uh, by, uh, by Ashcorp, and full disk encryption with declarative partitioning, uh, it would be really trivial to add fully encrypted guests uh, really easily with automatic decryption using Mondo's. Mondo's has an interesting threat model, which is reasonable, and enables you to to um, to decrypt machines at boot time using over machines, so it works by maintaining uh, a, s a table of PGP encrypted passphrase, and you send them the encrypted message uh, by your trusted peers, and then it's kind of fully meshed, uh, and uh, it works also with a manual passphrase entry or whatever you want. Also, so it would enable full disk encryption into data centers, which is interesting. So to conclude, um, one of my personal objectives is to see more offerings of private flexible infrastructure like uh, Amazon Services does without having to use their infrastructure. So the thing is that you want to hold your own physical service because you have some constraint and you want to run software in a nice way. So I think that Nix is, uh, is an important key towards this goal. And um, contrary to Nix apps, which is uh, well known to be this old piece of software that doesn't work that well with everything the rest. 
But I think it's, it's salvageable. The new version looks really promising and it's, it's not that bad. Um, but of course, uh, I, I can understand the, the criticism. Um, finally, if the future work that I presented could be implemented, it would enable a trivial, easily IPv6 only, NixOS only, fully declarative micro data center, uh, which to me would be a definitely exciting first step towards uh, independency from the public cloud. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Um, and thank you for watching. And I will, avail I will be available for a question over ERC2. And don't, don't hesitate to watch the demonstration if you find this uh, interesting. Thanks. OK, that will now begin the Q&A portion. So I believe we actually only have one question. And I think our presenter actually saw it as well. So I think we'll just re like rehash the discussion here. Do you think you could do that, Ryan? Yeah. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. OK, all right. So the question asked by uh, Niku was, um, why not implementing happy tables for um, the IPv6 versus IPv4 uh, connection selection uh, mechanism? And the thing is that, um, so I think I, I'm not sure I exactly talked about it uh, in my talk, but uh, you have multiple criteria that you want to optimize, like for example, reliability. Um, if your uh, link is working well on the first packet you're sending, is it going to work well afterwards? Um, same goes for uh, speed and reachability. So you have to take in account that you're sometimes roaming. So um, you could retry doing the, the happy tables each time, but um, I think it's it's a bit it's a bit not effect efficient. Uh, I think there are algorithms in research that uh, shows better results in terms of uh, those criteria. So um, I think we have to implement and uh, measure actually how, how it works really. So that was kind of my answer. And some people re-explained the same things. Right, a little um, extra commentary. Yeah. So I think with that, I don't see any more questions? Yeah, I do not see any more questions. So um, I believe this will elapse the um, Q&A portion. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your recording. It was great having you. Thank you. Yep, and everyone go offer Ryan in the chat. Come on. And you also.